<laughs> that does not get old. Guys, good morning. Welcome to a very nippy rain session. There's a little bit of wind, a brisk wind, if you will, sort of from, we're gonna be shooting there. So sort of from the 10 o'clock position, I've got the 223 Remington here. Today, we're gonna be lobbing it in. If you look over there, you will see the range right about there. And there's some white specks on the back there. So we're gonna be lobbing them in over the buildings and dropping them into the range. Now you might say, Pete, that is very irresponsible. Which it would be if there were people there, but there's nobody there. So if you're watching this video and you see the buildings and the stuff, we came here really early as the sun was rising. The sun's actually just crested there. Luckily, the sun's also sort of towards our 9, 10 o'clock, so it won't interfere too much shining into the scope. Without further ado, let me get set up on a little ridge here and uh, range that target. I've got no idea how far that is, but uh, my goal is to test the ground part. And we'll circle back to the ground part just now, but let me get set up. Um, I haven't checked zero. This is gonna be cold bore at, I don't know what the distance is. So let's start by ranging it. Okay, so I'm getting 610 meters. I don't know if my time of flight will allow, but if it does, I'm gonna try do a double tap. So I'm gonna have to be really quick. Get two rounds in the air before the first one hits. So let's see if we can pull that off somehow. what I'm gonna do with wind but elevation is gonna be 4.9 okay boom let's load up some some rounds and uh, my goal always with these is to see if we can get a cold bore shot which basically means your very first round of the day not having shot paper or anything now chances are you're gonna miss the shot okay well with this caliber at 600 yards I mean 660 yards, it is, it's pretty far, it's a stretch with the 223, I'm shooting them very slow, 2720 feet per second, so they're slow. But be that as it may, even if I do miss, my goal is then to see where that miss is and spot for myself to make a correction because that is such a valuable skill. So every time I come out to the range and I have the opportunity to take a shot like this, I try and take advantage of that opportunity to learn. Make some adjustments because we're dealing with a little valiki here. There's like a little rise where the rifle's gonna go. Okay, so the rifle's gonna go this way. Pull my shooting mats a little bit. These little roll up shooting mats are available now on my store and are a treat for situations like this. So that might still be a little bit high. Okay, boom. Now we do have the opportunity to do that sort of 45, but I think if I nestle this guy into the sand like that oh money okay i'm super comfortable get my rear back right i did dial 4.9 i'm not gonna do anything for the wind in fact there's a slight breeze so i'm gonna hold left edge of the target like on the on the edge set my parallax right i hope that spotting scope is still focused for you guys so let's see what we got Okay, we want to make sure everything is absolutely perfect here now. Okay, I'm rock steady. Make sure there's no cant. Left edge. And... Oh, man! Okay, so I was able to pick up the trace all the way there and I thought it was going to be a banker because the trace bended in. The wind was absolutely perfect, but we hit like... I don't know, um, a target low, so I'm gonna add four clicks and uh, see if we can make a follow-up hit here. But the wind was money. Four clicks might not be enough, I'm gonna make it five. <laughs> okay five might have been too much so let's take one off 
and send another one that hit like on the left ish edge so I'm gonna hold a little bit less wind okay still hitting that hit high on the bolt so it might be that my cold bore shot was a little bit low so now I actually have to take about three cl two clicks off okay Okay, in the middle. Right. Okay, I'm going to fill up the mag a little bit. Let's see if we can get two rounds running downrange before the first one hits. Um, so, bup bup, essentially. <laughs> no pressure. Okay, we are still fine here. The range is still safe. There's no people coming down this road or anything. Okay, this is going to require a fast bolt manipulation and a very fast follow-up shot and it's going to be a really good test for this bipod because you need to be able to hold your rifle rock steady to be able to to do this so i don't know if we'll be able to get two in the air but we're going to try so we're going to try let's say we're going to try three times to do that let me just get comfortable i actually need to get rid of my jacket here okay again this is about 660 yards So we're going to make sure, we're going to have to rush some fundamentals here. That second shot's going to have to be a grip and rip. But the important part is for us to stay on target. There's no way to do this if you're not on target. So let's see. I'm going to do the first one slow. It's like a warm-up one and then we'll give it three good goes. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Let's do it three more times, shall we? Oh, wow. They hit like on the money. <laughs> that does not get old. Uh, might have a mag issue here on the next one. Ah, uh, yeah, had that feeding issue here. I was kind of expecting that. Let's get that round out. Ow! Man, that's fun. Woo! Okay, guys, that, um, I kind of feel puts a nice little validation on the ground part. It's certainly stable enough to just muck about at the range. Um, right, so I reset the cameras a little bit. Some clouds have moved in. I hope it doesn't cause a point of impact shift. But uh, you gotta be quick. So let's see if we can make it three for three with the double taps. You cannot hesitate at all here. Too easy, baby. <laughs> right, so this was our shooting off the top there so one of my rounds hit here i think on the bolt this was one of the very first ones when we were getting dope so that was one of the ones i hit high first one was down here then i hit there then there then we started dialing up and then this is sort of that double tap groups so it's round about the size of my hand slightly larger than my hand but i mean what's really cool is it's not all over the edge of the plate and everything it's kind of sent it up which i'm stoked with guys it honestly is so much fun being back at the range and having you guys here with me it really is reminiscent of the old days when the channel was still called pete skeet and we came out to the range and we had a lot of fun now i'm pleased to announce and you probably noticed this already that we do have access to a range where we can do cool stuff again so i'm super pumped now the little rifle i was using today just checking for cars the little rifle i was using is my 223 remington it is the ideal rifle to really do this little test with, to see if we can get two rounds in the air with uh, essentially double tapping that target at 660 yards or 610 meters, probably a little bit more than 660 yards. Now the reason for that is, is a few reasons. It's a very slow round, I'm shooting it at 2720 feet per second, so that basically means 
it's flying there, it's spending more time in the air on the way down to the target, which gives me more time to recover from recoil, find the target and squeeze off another good trigger pull. The next thing is, it's a very low recoiling round. It is a tiny little case, so it's not a lot of recoil to deal with. The Raptor obviously tames it, and with the ACC combo, I'm shooting the MDT ACC. It's packed full of weights, it's got weight on the outside. The rifle barely moves, as you noticed, when I'm shooting it. So it is a fantastic little match rifle, and it is exceptionally accurate even at this distance. I mean, the plate we were shooting is about this big, so round about this, if I had a slightly larger head, that's probably where we are now with regards to the ground pod. If you are looking for the most versatile, most adjustable bipod and money is not an option, that's not the bipod you should be buying. This is the bipod you should be buying. This is the MDT Skypod. Now this thing has more tricks than Felix the Cat, okay? But this is probably overkill for most people. And I would even make the argument, this is, it's freaking awesome, um, but Lately, the, the direction that the sport has gone into, I mean, the last couple of matches I shot, the only thing I used my bipod for, maybe on one stage, I know we shot off a, off a big rock. That's the only thing I used my bipod for on a two-day shoot. So to invest a lot of money into a bipod might be a little bit of overkill. And for the average shooter, this thing has way too much adjustment. It's, um, you're gonna freaking chase your tail if you don't use this thing every day. Now, the ground pod, on the other hand, is a much more budget friendly and it sort of falls in the in the price range at least here in South Africa of let me put that down of you know the the Atlas now it doesn't have as much adjustment you can still go forward and you can go backwards I think it looks horrendous if you mount it on your rifle and you have the legs backwards but if you've got a short little barrel and you want to fit it in your bag then I get why we want to do that we can adjust the cant here with a nice big lever on the back so that's this movement and you can set the amount of tension required to influence that cant. Now, a couple of things that I don't like. First of all, this knob, and this is feedback I've given to MDT. This is a pre-production version, by the way. I wish they made this knob, or they used the same knob as they did on the Skypod. This knob is a little plastic knob, and it looks and feels cheap. Now, I'm told that on the production models, they have actually upgraded this knob, which is really cool. The other thing that I wish they would have done, but I do get that, because the more features you pack into something, the more expensive it becomes to manufacture. There's no spring tension on this little Arca clamp here. So when you're undoing the Arca clamp, it doesn't actually automatically move back. So you kind of have to help it open. But I mean, when you're guiding your Arca rail in, that's not really a biggie. So that's really nitpicking a little bit. But I mean, as you saw here in today's video, it is pretty stable. We have done some positional shooting with the two, as you guys would have seen in one of my last videos. And it absolutely kept up with the pace and the abuse that I've thrown with it. As with the Skypod, let's get the Skypod sort of back in that same configuration. Um, let's get the legs in. There is a little bit of wiggle in this, and there's a little bit of wiggle in that. You're always gonna have that, because once you have the tolerances too tight, it binds up with the smallest amount of grime or dirt or anything that gets in there. So these buttons here are nice and spring-loaded for that mechanism. These ones are cool. You can just pull them out. You don't have to fiddle with anything. So because that's always the difficult bit when you're lying down to make your bipod longer becomes an issue. Also, in this case, to collapse it, all you have to do is push that little button in and the weight of your rifle is actually gonna collapse that for you. Now, that is handy, because on the Atlases, for example, you've gotta pull that little slider thing down, and that is sometimes difficult to do, especially when under time pressure. So, for the money, ground pod is gonna be a solid bipod for you. As I said in my last couple of matches, we literally mostly use our bipods for just staging our rifles in between stages because we're always shooting off some sort of positional element. Anyway guys, that's the video on the ground pod. These are available now in South Africa. They're sort of around the five grand mark depending on the configuration you get them in. My store is impactproshop.net. We do sell things all over the world. So if you're looking for something precision rifle related, the rear bag I'm using, for example, or this ammo binder, we have everything we got you covered. And supporting us on the store goes a hell of a long way to making this channel a viable business. So I wanna thank everybody that has and everybody that will support us in the future. We have some very exciting news with regards to the store. We're opening up a physical store very, very soon in the Durbanville area. So keep an eye out for that. Anyway, guys, have a great one. God bless you all. And uh, let me know if you like the video. Bye.